Hey everyone, my name is Mason and welcome to Filter Grade. If you think of color grading, you might think of Premiere Pro or another program dedicated to color grading like DaVinci Resolve. But of course, Adobe Creative Cloud programs have a lot of overlap, and today we'll be using After Effects for our color grading. If you already know how to color grade, then this should be an easy transition for you. Color grading in After Effects uses a lot of the same tools and concepts as Premiere Pro. In fact, today we're going to be focusing on the Lumetri Color effect to apply color grading to our footage. This is something that exists in Premiere Pro and is an awesome addition to Adobe software. If you're just getting into color grading, this is a perfect place to start. And again, like most Adobe programs, there are a lot of different ways to approach this. The approach in this video is not the be all end all, and it's certainly not the only way, but I think it's a great start and this should give you some basic knowledge you need to get better at color grading. So we're gonna start with a little clip from an indoor shoot that was relatively well lit, but this camera uh, did not absorb the light very well. However, there's a lot we can do to color correct it. So we're gonna drag in this footage, and then we're going to right click on our timeline, go to new adjustment layer. This way we can be as non-destructive as possible to our original footage and we can see a before and after. So we're going to search our effects and presets for Lumetri Color and drag that onto our adjustment layer. Then we'll see all these options on the side here. Go ahead and open up Basic Correction first. The very first thing that we see here is Input LUT, and Input LUTs generally don't look very good, but there's a variety of different things that you can do, and maybe it's a look you're looking for. In this case, none of these look very good. So the first thing we're going to do here is white balance. Uh, this is a great tool that you can use to automatically white balance your scene if out of camera it doesn't look very good. There's temperature and tint, which you can adjust yourself, but to make it easy you can grab the eyedropper and click on anything white in your scene and that'll balance it out. I'm going to undo that and then bring up the exposure so we can kind of see more what's going on here. Uh, you can see that the scene is a little orangish, so if we grab the eyedropper and click on the white wall, we see that it gets a little more blue, takes out some of that red. That's a little too much, so I'm gonna go maybe here. Or maybe about here. I think right there is good. So it's a little more blue. As we can see, it turned the tint up more into the magenta and turned the temperature down more into the blues. That's a good starting point. So that brings me to exposure, which is the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do. Putting this back to zero, we can see this is way too dark. We need to brighten this up a lot. So we're gonna bump up the exposure. Don't be afraid to bump it up so far that it overexposes things because we can, we can mess with the sum of that later. So we can bring that up a little bit. And then to get rid of some of these overexposed parts, we're actually going to mess with the highlights. So I'm gonna start by dragging those all the way down. Yeah, it looks a little weird. Let me bring it back up a little bit. Find a good balance. We might need to lower our exposure in this case. And that looks pretty good. You wanna make sure that the blown out parts aren't too blown out, but you also wanna make sure your footage still looks natural. And now take, let's take a look at what contrast does. If we bring down our contrast, then it makes everything kind of gray. We bring it up, there's a stark difference between black and white. In this case, it looks pretty good at zero. But we might want to bring it up just a little bit, hide some of that artifacting from bringing up the exposure. And I think actually now that I'm looking at this, I'm actually going to change the white balance to make the temperature a little cooler again. It's becoming a little, a little bit too red. And then shadows in this case, I don't think we're going to want to mess with much if we drag them up. That'll increase and brighten up the shadows. If we bring it down, it'll make the shadows darker. In this case, maybe we'll bring them up a little bit, but really they're pretty good where they are. Actually, yeah, let's just set them at zero. Whites will change the intensity of whites, so if we drag it up, that'll make all the white spots even brighter. In this case, we're, we can't drag them down too much because that makes the scene a little bit darker. So we're gonna leave those at zero as well. The main thing this shot needed was exposure. And the blacks are the same thing with the blacks. It's quite a dramatic effect. So we're just gonna leave that where it is. And then saturation, of course, increases the saturation of colors. 
Might want to bring this down a little bit in this case, just because some of those skin tones are pretty crazy. But overall, it's not bad. And now, quickly, the before and after. It's a much better shot. And now we can see all the lighting that was actually in the scene ended up having a good effect once we can actually color correct it. There's a few other things you can do. Going into the creative tab, there's things like faded film that uh, sort of do a similar thing to if we upped the blacks. You know, just, just some certain effects you may or may not want to achieve. Sharpening can help a lot. You don't want to overdo it because then it looks weird and like a painting. But if we just up our sharpening a little bit, sometimes that can make our subject pop a little bit more. I'll set that around 20. That makes the subject here pop quite a bit more than, than before. And here's that at zero again. And 20. And here we have more things like saturation and vibrance. So vibrance works similar to saturation, but it boosts the colors that are not saturated first. And then we have the more complex things like curves. We're not going to be using curves today, but if you wanted to adjust curves, you could change things like shadows, highlights, and midtones, as well as the same thing for every color with these curves. So there are a lot of options, and you can do the same with all the colors. Uh, but again, that's similar to some of the things we're doing up here, especially in terms of exposure and shadows. So really whatever you're comfortable with. If you have prior experience color grading, you may want to use some of those things. And then of course, if you want to get very creative, you can go into color wheels and change the actual colors of shadows, midtones, and highlights directly here. So in this case, that's not something that we want to do, but let's say we want to make those highlights green. Then we would get this image here, which is obviously not what we want. But if you do it in subtle ways, like the classic teal and orange, you know, we make our make our shadows a subtle teal and make our midtones a subtle orange. And that accomplishes a very popular filmic look. So there's a lot you can do to customize exactly what you're going for. So feel free to definitely play around with all of these things because there's a lot of options and you may stumble upon something that you like. Some things to avoid. You gotta make sure that you understand your knowledge level with color grading. It takes a long time to figure out how to color grade well and to get an eye for it. Like in this case, I don't think that this looks good with all of these changes we just made. So of course I'm gonna set that back to where it looks a lot better and more natural. You know, it takes a long time to figure out what looks natural. Uh, in general, the human eye and human brain are pretty good at understanding what a natural skin tone looks like, as well as things like grass and sky. Those are things that we know well and can tell if they're color graded oddly. But still, with that in mind, it can still be hard to figure out what looks unnatural. Sometimes you need to take a step back because you can end up taking it too far. So with some of these lessons in mind that we've looked at, let's go ahead and take a look at some other clips. So here's another quick clip we can look at that uh, is decently exposed, but we can see in the background there's quite a bit of uh, bright overexposed light. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with this. So we're going to go to make an adjustment layer, and then we're going to drag Lumetri Color onto that adjustment layer. Now the first thing that I want to do here is of course select the white balance. There's nice lines here so that can, that can show the white balance, but Overall, it seems like a pretty well-balanced scene. Even if I go to some of these other whites, it, uh, it overall is pretty good. So, so yeah, I'm gonna say that's pretty good. So the first thing I might wanna do here is uh, go into the highlights, turn them way down. Now all the way down doesn't look good, but if I turn them just, you know, that's all the way up, that's all the way down. So if we turn them down most of the way, that helps a lot. And then we can adjust the whites so it's still bright enough. Overall exposure is good. I don't think we need to mess with that. But contrast, contrast maybe down a little bit, but that doesn't make too much of a difference. Shadows, we might want to 
increase to sort of increase that contrast. And then blacks. I think blacks in this case, it really depends on what you're going for. I think they look good both all the way down and all the way up. In this case, I think I'm gonna bring them up a little bit, give more of a gray tone. And then increase the vibrance a little bit to give this green a lot more pop. Just at zero, this green really doesn't look like much. So we're going to increase that a little bit. Now let's watch the footage back. Yeah, it looks a lot more lush, a lot better. Now let's take a look at those color wheels again. And I think there's some opportunity to mess with them here. So let's go to our midtones, which is a good chunk of our footage. Let's try to give that a different look. So, you know, we have this green look, but let's say we want to, let's say we want to give it a cold look. You know, maybe it's early in the morning. It's a little chilly out still. So we want that green in there, but we also want a fair bit of blue. So we can change the highlights over to blue. We want to be subtle here. You know, mid-tones can be... We don't want them to be blue also, because then we get very much a blue tone. So we can make those ever so slightly green-yellow to kind of counterbalance that. And then the shadows, that's something that can definitely be blue as well. But we want that to be very subtle in this case. The highlights really add a lot of the, the blue in this case. And it helps take away some of that yellow light and the yellow fringing around the trees. So here's before and here's after. We get a much cooler looking scene, but also more lush at the same time. So now this kind of shows how you can really use these three color wheels to play around a lot and fundamentally change your footage. I mean, looking at the original footage, this is very warm, very neutral colored, uh, which is a great starting point for color grading. And now here we can see that we've accomplished something that's much more pleasing to the eyes in general. Another thing that we can do here is a vignette. And the first option on vignette is a mount. If we drag that up, we get a white vignette. If we drag it back, we get a black one. So if we drag that all the way to the left, then that gives us this nice little focus. You know, we have some vignetting around the edge and make us focus more on our subject. This can be very useful in some cases. You know, it's a stylistic choice. You can also change the feather to change how intense it is. Obviously, you'll never want to do this, but you can make it more intense by decreasing the feather. I think something like that looks good. So yeah, you can adjust that as you see fit, but it definitely adds a lot more focus, keeps the eyes away from those corners, makes you focus in on what's going on in the center of, of frame. Now lastly, let's look at this interior shot, similar to the first shot we we're looking at, but this one's a little better exposed right out of the gate, and it's only light sources are some light shining from outside and some overhead light, whereas the previous one was only uh, you know fluorescent lights on the ceiling and then some artificial light from soft boxes and things. So this is all natural no photography lights here. So let's go and add our adjustment layer. So we're gonna go grab our Lumetri color and we're gonna go to basic correction. The first thing we're gonna do is the white balance selector. And this is gonna make a big difference in this shot because you can see this wall. It seems like it's supposed to be white or maybe off white. And this whole scene is very warm and yellow. So if we do our white balance over here, look how much that fixes this shot. I think that in this case, the white balance makes this shot look infinitely better. So we've really cooled down the temperature and then made it a little more magenta. Uh, exposure, it's pretty good. We're gonna bring it up a little bit. Not so much that we blow out that wall, but just like two or three ought to do it. And overall, I'm pretty happy with this shot. This wall's a little blown out, so we're going to take the highlights and drag them down a bit so it looks more natural. I think that looks pretty good. And really, there's not a lot that we need to do here. I'm gonna bring down the blacks just a little bit, just barely, because if we have it at zero, you know, this door is pretty detailed, but what if we want to put that more in shadow? Something like that. I think we can darken the shadows here, and then we can decrease the blacks to get a more pure 
black. So in this case, I'm doing it so we can barely see that line on the elevator. But I also want to make sure we have enough light in this corner that we can still see the plant and everything that's going on over there. So I'm going to bring up the exposure and bring down the highlights a little bit more. Drag down the whites slightly. And now I'm actually feeling like the color temperature is a little too warm again, so I'm going to... I'm gonna drag it down a little bit. It's a little better. So let's go into the color wheels. I want my shadows to not be so yellow. I want them to be more blue toned. Uh, I think that yellow looks pretty gross. You know, it's an office scene. A lot of the lights kind of make it make everything look yellow. So I want to turn that. I want to turn that blue. Not green, but blue. And then mid-tones, since this wall is orange, I kind of want to go for an orange tone opposite of the blue. But again, I don't want those shadows to turn green. I think something like that looks pretty good. And then for highlights, yeah, I'm not sure. Let's kind of mess around with that. I think something in the red area would look pretty good, but really we don't want to do too much with the highlights here. Maybe just some light blue. Get that wall a little bit more of a blue tone. Yeah, it looks pretty solid. So here's the after and here's the before. A little too blue now. I think that looks pretty good. So we had a very kind of dark shot, you know, not a lot of lighting, pretty yellow, pretty warm. And now we have something that's a little more neutral, almost on the cool side. Doesn't look as badly like it's lit with fluorescent light. And a big thing is that, you know, some of the details we've either captured or, or hidden. So that elevator, not important, so we've kind of darkened it up. You know, that corner is a little mysterious, a little higher contrast. But it just looks like a much more neutral scene. Let's go ahead and go into creative again. Let's try to sharpen this up a little bit and that can sometimes help we don't have a clear subject in here but sharpening will help us a little bit and then looks like we're good without vibrance and then a little bit of faded film can give us a little more of a vintage look but it's not too too important in this case we don't want to you can see the blacks are already kind of struggling here on the elevator so i might turn both those down a little bit just give it a subtle look and I think I think we're done looks a lot better so thank you all for watching this tutorial on color grading in After Effects the elementary color panel in After Effects is exactly the same as it is in something like Premiere Pro so feel free to learn whatever software you want but you may find that you're spending spending a lot of time in After Effects and that you want to learn how to color grade in it as well let us know your questions or comments down below. Let us know if you want to make any further videos on color grading or on After Effects, and we'll be sure to do so. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And if you're looking for professional LUTs, Lightroom desktop and mobile presets, Premiere Pro templates, and more photo and video education, visit filtergrade.com today.